Well, hello, cat loving world. It is your cat daddy, Jackson Galaxy, here. And today, I'm very excited about this. Can you tell? I'm all a Twitter here. Not a Twitter, a flutter. Anyhow, I'm really excited because today we're going to talk about adoption. <laughs> Adopting an animal is such a joy for anybody and everybody who has ever adopted before. You know what I'm talking about. And, and to be able to be talking to you guys who might be sitting at home, clicking on the title because you're like, well, I'm thinking about it. What do I need? Well, that's what I'm here for, man. First of all, let's just talk about why adopt. Because we have millions of animals that are going into animal shelters every single year. Although we have made great strides in lowering our kill rate across the country, we're still at about a million cats and dogs a year that, that die in these shelters. And most of the time, it's because we just don't have enough homes for them. That's the reason to adopt at this point, because you love animals, you, you want them to live, plus the companionship, plus the unbelievable gratitude that you get. Some people doubt this, but for anybody who has rescued an animal, they know that they hit the gravy train and they're stoked. So the first thing that you should be thinking about is, we gotta put it out there, is the cost. Rescuing is one of the most loving things that you can do for, for one animal, for all animals. But you do wanna make sure that when you think about their entire lifetime, that you're gonna be able to afford what comes up. I'm a big proponent of pet insurance. If you don't already have insurance for your uh, existing animal family, think about it. There are a lot of different insurance companies. Uh, they have flexible uh, premium plans. Some cover a lot more than others do. There are some that even cover cover behavior counseling, go figure. And look, whether you put your money into premiums every month or whether you are in a dedicated way stuffing money into your mattress every month for the well-being of your animals, do one or the other. I know I'm walking a fine line here. I don't wanna scare you guys off and at the same time, I want you to be prepared. You do have to think that when you adopt a kitten, that kitten is, is hopefully going to be with you at least, I don't know, 15 years. You know, you gotta think about that the expenses over that amount of time. And, and one of the big things you wanna think about right off the bat is you wanna be able to spend some money setting up your cat's environment. And that leads me to my second point. And that is getting your home ready for your new arrival. And it doesn't matter whether it's a kitten or a grown cat, pet proofing is something that is a real thing and something that you, you should take seriously. So if you're bringing home a kitten, child locks on all of the cabinets you don't want them into is a real good investment and really well worth your time. So whether that's under the, the kitchen sink, under the bathroom sink, the closets that might hold any kind of toxins whatsoever, just make sure you're getting all that taken care of. Wires are something that uh, wind up getting chewed a lot of times. So a really easy fix for that is running your computer wires or any other wires that you don't want chomped on because whether it is just losing a connection or electrocuting your potential family member, uh, it's a real easy thing to just just take the wires and feed them through some PVC tubing. There are some products that come with brand names with this, but you can also just go to a hardware store and just get PVC tubing and run those wires through. There's a lot of cool products out there right now, but it is much better to do that right off the bat than wait for something bad to happen. Whether you live in an apartment or a house, check your windows, check your screens. Imagine, if you will, your cat sitting in your home on the second or third floor of, of a house and they're pushing on a screen because there's a bug on the other side of that screen. Remember, their whole body weight is going into it or whether you have bars in your windows because you live in an apartment, everything. Check everything. Don't just let your cats out there. I'm not even a big fan of letting them out on a balcony or something like that. If, if there's a bug out there, if there's a moth, if there's even a bird that they think they can reach, they're going to try to. Pet proofing is one part of preparation. The other part is establishing base camp. If you don't know what base camp is, well, check out this video right here and that'll give you everything you need to know about it. In the meantime, it is a way to make sure that your new arrival, whether kitten or grown cat, doesn't matter, has the roots of mojo in your home. That's base camp. And setting up that base camp before they arrive is the best way to make sure that when they do get there, the adjustment is not such a big deal. And another reminder, block off 
off the unders, folks. Don't let cats into the closet under the beds because why would you want to start off your relationship with them trying to dig them out of a place they've hidden for the first week of uh, their tenure with you? Not worth it. Whether we're dealing with adoptions during the lockdown, quarantine, or beyond, one of the things that shelters and rescues do very well, for the most part, is letting you know what kind of a cat you're adopting in terms of energy level, in terms of needs, in terms of history, and what potential um, issues they might have based on their history. Pay very close attention to that. Even if you vibe with a cat, and you look at that picture, and you're like, that is the cutest cat I've ever seen. I want that cat in my life. That's amazing. And I love that. I think it's great. I think it's great that, that you look at a cat and go, I just, I know that me and you are meant to be together. That's fantastic. Stay with that for a second. Now back away for a second and think about how that cat's specific energy level works in your home. For instance, if this is a cat who has uh, a history that's not so shining with other cats or dogs, think about that for a second. If you are incredibly busy, if you're working 12 hours a day, I know, once you go back to work, but uh, then you wanna make sure that you're adopting cats that are okay with that. And that means a cat that's a little more settled in their ways, a senior cat. And seniors really need the attention uh, in shelters much more so than kittens. Kittens go flying out the door for the most part, but those seniors tend to stick around. If you do work long hours, I'm not saying that a senior cat won't also get bored and you won't have to do stuff about that. Kittens really need attention. They really need that playtime a lot and, and they need to be able to start bonding with their humans. And that's 12 hour work days? Nah, that doesn't work with that. If you don't have a strong training base for your dogs, now's the time to do it, not after a cat comes into your life. If your dog can't stay while your cat is walking across the room, then just stop. There's no rush. It goes a long way. And this is coming from somebody who has made the mistake of bringing cats into your home when your dogs aren't quite there yet and you just spend a lot of time with remedial training work and trying to then repair a relationship between cat and dog that might have been fractured right off the bat because they got chased. When it comes to bringing home a cat with an existing cat, we talked about making sure that you know the history of the cat that's coming to your home. If they have a history of not getting along with other cats, don't push it. Take it from the cat daddy. There is no point to trying to push a relationship with a cat who has a long history of just saying, you know what, man, I would rather be alone, you know? And make sure you understand how to introduce cat to cat. I have gone through great details about introducing cat to cat, including in this video right here. When we bring them home, there's this initial rush of love and you're flush with energy, sometimes anxiety. If you don't already have your basics in your mind and written out there and you and your partner have it all worked out, it tends to go out the window and panic sets in. Have things planned out, just like you're gonna pet proof, just like you're gonna set up base camp. Think about how this introduction is gonna go down, what we're gonna need in, in the way of a uh, different set of dishes and litter boxes, in terms of the meeting itself and using baby gates if you need to, these kind of things. Just plan it all out. We all got thrown into the same hole here and we're all trying to claw out from that hole. And we're learning new things about our system and how we adopt animals. And suddenly, we're doing socially distanced adoptions, which is actually pretty amazing. Do remember to check out what kind of policies are in place, whether in your city, uh, your state, or from shelter to shelter and rescue to rescue. Like I said, everyone's doing it the same but different and uh, it's important to research that ahead of time. Now there's one distinct advantage to adopting or even fostering during the time of this quarantine lockdown place, and that is, well, the obvious. We're spending more time 
with our animal family and bringing in a new family member and really getting to know the ins and outs of their likes and dislikes, their habits, good and bad, where they like to sleep, what they like to play with, where they like to hang, uh, are they nocturnal or not, what do I have to do for you to make you happy in your new home? Well, you're gonna know that so much better right now. So it's something to just seize upon, take advantage. The other thing that you can do before you go back to work, uh, you've, you've adopted a new family member, you've brought them home, you've integrated them, congratulations. Now don't forget, you are going to change your life back again and the cat is going to have to adjust to your new normal. So the best thing you can do is to forestall separation anxiety, get them used to what that normal is gonna look like slowly, start taking more longer walks uh, during the day, get outside a little bit more, don't just leave and go to work for 10 hours and come back home. Don't expect that just because, you know, it's, it's back to work time for you, that your new cat or cats are going to just understand that and adjust just like that. Just ease them into it. Ease them into it with a different type of routine. Uh, spread out feeding time so that it will correlate with you getting up in the morning, you leaving the house, you getting home, you going to bed. Just start getting your routine back in order with your cats in mind before you leave the house. Once again, you guys, if you're watching this video, then you've already been thinking about adopting a new family member. And from the bottom of this cat daddy's heart, thank you. Thank you for being part of the solution to the horrible overpopulation crisis that we've been in the middle of for so many years. We're finally getting to the point where we can see the light at the end of the tunnel and you are a part of that light. So again, thank you for adopting. Remember, be prepared before you bring them home because the lack of surprises means you can spend a whole lot more time on a lot more lovey-dovey. So until next time we meet, Light, love, mojo, adopt, don't shop. Meow.